Okay, so in the practice you did just now, um, you hopefully have an animation that looks something like this. Mm. I've made two of the changes here. One of the changes is that I have the ball falling vertically rather than horizontally. You probably also uh, discovered this through some trial and error, that we have to start at one and then subtract as there's more uh, or larger frames. And then also you can see that, um, well, you probably did the same. You probably increased the Z order of the circle size on top of the, on top of the line. Uh, the last part was definitely the trickiest, right, when we wanted to make it smoother without making it longer than uh, two seconds. Um, what did you have to do there? Well, you had to change the interval, you had to change the frames, and then uh, since we had more frames, we had to move a little bit less per frame since we were having more of them, right? We want to move the same amount over the same amount of time. So this is not a great way to structure the code. If I want to make one change, like smoothness, mm, ideally I should only have to change the code in one place, right? There's too many pieces that are coupled here. So in this I'm going to be talking about how we can um, kind of tweak one variable to change this. I'm going to structure the code that way. Mm, and that'll help us with our debugging as well. So one way we can uh, think about smoothness is with a variable called frames uh, per second, right? And we'll set that to something that's frames uh, per second. And if there's more frames per second, it's smoother. Um, you know, probably 30, 40, 50 frames is, is pretty smooth. Uh, 10 frames per second is pretty choppy. Here, I guess, well, I'm just, uh, how many frames per second do I have? Well, that's a quarter of a second. So right now it's four frames per second, horribly choppy. So let's set this to something like um, 20. And then the other variable we can have is um, how many seconds long the video is. And uh, we want to keep that fixed, and that's I think that here is going to be two seconds. And uh, and so now uh, when I come down here, I can actually figure out how to deal with these um, variables, right? I guess how many frames do I have? Well, it's um, however many frames per second there are by the number of seconds, and um, and and perhaps I need to make that uh, an integer. I guess I don't here, right? Because I already have some integers, but you could imagine. If I was having a fraction of a second, I might need to do some rounding there. And uh, what about what about this one? Um, well, I, I really want kind of seconds between frames, so I have something like one over uh, frames per second, right? So that would get me what like five percent right now. But but that's five percent of a second, and this is a millisecond. So I think what I have to do is actually say. Uh, 1,000 times that. You know what? I can just simplify that. That'll give me the milliseconds I need uh, between my frames. And then, so that were two of the places, right? I, I have this is based on that, this as well. Uh, what about this up here? How can I figure out how far I want this to move? What we really want to do is instead of thinking about frame numbers, we want to think about what percentage uh, of the way are we through the film. Okay, and uh, and well, how can we do that? That's going to be this frame number divided by the number of frames. I guess I have the number of frames down here. I could copy this up here if I wanted to. Uh, maybe better though, right? Is I'll have a, a frame count variable. Right, and I can use that in both these places. Right, so let me do this, and then down here as well. Okay. So let me think through this. This is maybe the percentage that we're done. And then we can just base everything on that. Where should the position of this be? Well, um, I want to start off with it being at the top, right? So uh, I can just say I'm subtracting the percent. So this will start at, well, when I'm 0% done, this is 1, right? So it's at the top. And then when I'm all the way done, this is 1. And so if that's 1, I would be at the bottom, right? So I think that if I run this, I should get the same, same thing. And that will take a moment. Definitely a lot smoother. Maybe you can see it's still a little bit choppy. Uh, still 2 seconds, which is great. Uh, what's good about this now, though, is that uh, notice that it took 5.8 seconds to uh, run. If I was debugging things and I just want to do some troubleshooting, I can experiment, right? I can 
get other factors right like this, right? Like maybe I was debugging the Z order, things like that. Uh, what you'll typically do is make it look good at a low frame rate, and then after everything is else this time in place, you'll crank up the frame frames per second to create something polished for somebody else to use. Okay, so maybe maybe if I have this like 50 frames per second, then it'll be highly polished. Let's just do that and see how that looks. Uh, everything that when you're programming, right, you want to think about how you can have this developer velocity. How can you quickly make a change and then troubleshoot it? Right, so there's going to be lots of tricks like this as a programmer. I see, of course, okay, that took quite a while to uh, build, but it's a very smooth video. The other thing that I think is very helpful is, um, is that we want to have some way to look at a single frame at a time. And so what I'll recommend is, is something like this. Um, let me think about the best way to do this. Uh, let, let me let me import display up here. So I, I think one we thing we can do is we want to figure out. Okay, let's say we're debugging. We have some sort of uh, debug frame. You know, maybe I want to get the fifth frame looking correct, right? So I'm gonna have this debug frame, and let's say I want to debug frame 25, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say something like this: if if debug frame is not equal to none. Then what? So then in this case, we want to just see a single frame because we're debugging. So I'm just trying to draw that frame. What is the debug frame? Otherwise, otherwise I'm going to do all this other stuff that I normally do. Okay, so let me let me just put this back. Right, so in this case, I'm going to run that and I can see, I can easily debug um, individual frames, right? I can see what's going wrong. I could, I could see, oh, 60, it's instant, right? And then I could play with the Z order or things like that uh, and kind of quickly see the fact. Okay. Now, what if I want to switch back, right? So if I actually want the finished product, then I disable this debug feature and then it should debug the uh, build it as before. You know, the one problem I may run into, though, is, is this piece, right? Because this is not going to get automatically displayed at the end, only if that was like the last line of my cell, but it's not, right? It's inside of this block. So maybe one thing I can do is I can I can do a display like this, and that will make sure it, it basically, it won't go to the, um, it won't go to the outbox like this, but it'll still get displayed, which is fine for my purposes. So let me, let me put this slower just for the purposes of debugging. Great, and so now you see this is, it didn't go to the outbox, right? I'm basically doing a print. Um, and so I can I can do that. I can switch back and forth, right? Uh, depending on what is in here, and if I'm just like looking at a single frame or doing the whole thing, right? You're gonna find as you do more and more complicated projects, you're gonna write more and more code uh, just around uh, testing and debugging. Okay, uh, that's it.